Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We thank God Almighty for the opportunity to look into His Word once again. We pray that God Almighty, who has been our strength and our shield, will keep revealing new things to us daily in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of this new day. We thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the gift of your word. It is such a blessing that we have your word that we can study to imbibe the truths of your word to live our lives daily until you come again. We pray that today your word will speak life to us. May it speak power to us and may it transform our lives. This we ask and pray for in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, Tuesday, 21st of July, we are looking at Acts chapter 17, the book of Acts chapter 17, verse 10 to 12. And the topic is the Berean Commitment. The Berean Commitment. Let's open our Bibles to Acts chapter 17, verse 10 to 15. It says, Then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness and, reached and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Therefore many of them believed, and also not a few of the Greeks, prominent women as well as men. But when the Jews from Thessalonica learned that the word of God was preached by Paul at Berea, they came there also and stirred up the crowds. Then immediately the brethren sent Paul away to go to the sea, but both Silas and Timothy remained there. So those who conducted Paul brought him to Athens, and receiving a command for Silas and Timothy to come to him with all speed, they departed. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Now, we thank God for the blessing of his word. Uh, this you know, is a very familiar passage to many of us who are conversant with the scriptures. Uh, the Berean Christians, as we see there, were people who were they were able to study the Old Testament scriptures, and they had it in mind. Even when Paul came to minister the gospel to them, they were still able to look through the Old Testament and confirm many of the things that Paul was saying to show that Jesus Christ is a fulfillment of the Word of God. He didn't just come to give us a new lifestyle. He also confirmed the old one. So he doesn't forsake it. He doesn't put it aside in any way. He is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. And you see that Paul was a person who was able to minister to Gentile nations. He was able to minister to them freely and also uh, with so much power and understanding. He was someone who was very grounded in the word of God. He knew the Jewish laws. He knew their statutes. He knew their precepts. So being a convert of Christ, he was able to minister very freely and able to help them see where they have missed certain points and certain revelations from the Old Testament. Now, the, the whole story from chapter 17, the beginning part, is actually very interesting. Taking note that Paul had preached he had gone to Thessalonica to preach to them, and they, of course, a few received the word, but many others rejected him. They, they even formed a, a mob. They started causing riots just against one man and maybe uh, um, Silas. Uh, for them to have caused such a stir in that city, you know how uh, they were really antagonistic against the, the gospel of Christ. So you see them. Through the help of the person that they stayed with, uh, Jason, who was a person that God used at that time uh, to protect Paul and Silas until they were, safe, they were able to safely escape uh, the city of Thessalonica and to go into the land of Berea. But it's in the land of Berea you see the favor of God. So there are times you minister the word of God, you receive attack, you receive persecution, but then some other times you see the favor that God granted them in the land of Berea. The Bible says they were more fair-minded 
you know, they, they're more perceptive towards the word of God. They're able to receive it and they're also able to confirm. They didn't just uh, uh, receive it and say, oh, well, thank you, Mr. Paul. You have ministered to us. Uh, God bless you. Go your way. No, they actually went back to the word of God to confirm it, which is one thing that we don't tend to do as Christians in our own days. We just listen to the word that has been spoken to us from the pulpit, from uh, by ministers of God, and then we leave it at that. Instead of going back to the word of God to be sure that what is being said is actually from the Bible. And if it's from the Bible, do we understand it for ourselves? The word that you study for yourself, just like we do for this devotional, when you study it by yourself, it gives you fresh insight. It shows you how much... Uh, you, you trust in the relationship you have with our Lord Jesus Christ. You're not just seeing it on the surface. You want to go deeper. Because the deeper you go in the Word of God, the more sound you are when troubles arise in your life tomorrow, when those ministers are no more there, when those pastors are no longer there, you know the Word of God for yourself and you're able to um, face any situation head on without being fearful. So it's my prayer that God will help us, that we will also imbibe that attitude of studying the Word of God, that anything we hear, we're able to confirm from God's Word. Now you see on, as um, Paul and Silas were preaching in this place, of course many people received the Word of God. It is so lovely, it says, so many of them believed, and also not a few of the Greeks. So not just the Jews, the Greeks were there, prominent women as well as men. They all received the word of God. It's my prayer that as we keep ministering to the word of God, we pray that we shall receive bountiful harvest in the name of Jesus. But as much as that is done, you see that the devil always looks for ways to also destroy the good thing that has been done. The Thess people from Thessalonica, they came, they heard of what Paul was doing. They came into the land of Berea to start causing strife to start causing uh, a stare among them to drive Paul away. Of course, they eventually did, in order not to cause chaos in the land, but the good seed has been sown already, which is what the Word of God is. It is a good seed. The more you preach it, the more you keep uh, ministering the Word of God, wherever it is that you find yourself, a seed is being sown. Even those ones who reject it, a seed is being sown. Yes, the devil may steal it, the devil may take it, the devil may choke it, but our own job is to keep ministering the word of God. Paul was still on his second missionary journey at this point. And you see all through his life, that is what he was called to do, to keep ministering the word of God. Anywhere that you find yourself, make sure you keep ministering that word of God. Know that, yes, there will be persecution, people who will reject you, people will even say all kinds of evil against you, but God Almighty will always fight for you. The same way he fought for Paul, in Thessalonica, he also fought for him right there in Beria. He protected him all through these missionary journeys. God is calling you to be a minister. God is calling you to keep preaching the word of God anywhere you find yourself. And the more you do it, the more he will shield you and also grant you favor anywhere you find yourself in Jesus' name. Let's go into our devotional this morning and see what we have for us. It says the Berian Commitment. The word of God today takes us into one of the ministry encounters of the apostle Paul and Silas at Beria. This encounter takes the reader into the realm of the workings of God's word. Here, Paul and Silas have just preached the word of God, which was eagerly received by many. However, the Berian audience has a lot to teach those of us who hear God's word today. Not only did they hear and receive uh, the word, but they went on to search the scriptures by themselves to be sure of the message they were receiving. Now, in our own days, we are even lucky we have both the Old Testament and the New Testament. Never take the old for granted to say we are New Testament Christians, we are New Testament believers. You are Bible believers. The Old Testament is the foundation for the New Testament. And thank God we have different new versions. Also, be careful the kind of versions that you read because there are some you see words are missing or they, they, they are misunderstood. Always make sure you study the word of God the way it is. Now it says, not only did they hear uh, and receive the word, but they went on to search the scriptures to be sure the message they were receiving. Unlike so many Christians today, these Berean converts were not lazy. They valued the message they received and went on to dig deeper. This obviously reflected on their personal and collective growth. Unfortunately, our Christianity today suffers a lot from spiritual laziness. 
Be sure you're not a lazy Christian, uh, lazy spirituality, only depending on what others do for you. It's only in time of revival that you feel revival. It's only a time of uh, special programs in church that you feel it. Make sure that you as a person, you develop yourself daily. It says, many of us who profess the faith have no working relationship with the word of God. We tend to forget that faith can only come by hearing, listening to, and meditating on and obeying the word of God. There's a sequence, so you must hear the word of God, listen to it, meditate and obey it daily. Our commitment to the word of God is what develops in us a firm conviction, especially in times of trial. The more you study the word of God, it develops a strong faith in you. A Christian who is not committed to the word of God cannot stand when winds of op opposition begins to blow. Our commitment to the word of God is what guarantees our personal growth spiritually. First Peter chapter 2 verse 2. Or like Jesus Christ said, it says, He who, who listens to his word and, and does them is like one who builds his, his house on a rock. But those ones who only listen to it but do not do it is like building a house on the sand. When the storms of life arises, such a house will just be blown away. But those ones who have built it on the rock, they remain firm to the very end. And it says, the word of God has power to break the yoke of sin over our lives. In uh, Psalm 1, 1, 9 verse 11 and John 17 verse 17. And it enlightens the mind and gives direction for life. Psalm 119 verse 97 to 105. When we know the word of God, then we will know God. The, draw, the more you dig deeper in the word of God, the more you know God, the more you know his will, the more you know his plan for your life, you'll not be someone who is easily confused. Even when evil things permeate all through our country, you are one person who will be able to remain focused on what God has called you to do no matter the limitations and no matter the trials that are around you. It is our prayer that as we keep aligned the word of God, be the foundation, be the pillar, and be the covering of our lives, no storms of life will shake us or move us here and there. We will remain firm to the very end in Jesus' name. And our prayer is, Lord, please enlarge my appetite for your word. Please enlarge my appetite for your word. It is our prayer that we will have such thirsting and yearning for God's word daily in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you all adoration for your favor and grace upon our lives. We thank you for the gift of your word. In it, we receive life. In it, we receive wisdom. We receive direction. Many tend to say that, yes, the Bible does not answer everything, but Lord, we know that the spirit behind your word is what gives us enlightenment. We pray that as we thirst and yearn for your word daily may it give us understanding in the affairs of our lives may we walk in your will and your purpose in jesus mighty name we pray amen we thank you dear people of god for joining us this morning as we go forth god almighty will be with us and direct us as you keep studying the word of god it will give you direction and you will not be lost in this life in jesus name thank you and god bless you we thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.